A look at world mobile documentation. Hey guys, hey girls. This is Asa Hansen of Alan Orpool. Um, this week we are really focusing on world mobile as we, uh, with the pool and Bex Region Block Exchange is doing a, a delegation reward. So currently we are giving away uh, world mobile tokens as a bonus reward to all our delegators. And we are really looking into uh, world mobile as we really love that project and we are going to do a node for world mobile as well in the future so that's cool today we're going to look a bit at the documents that's just recently been released by world mobile uh, regarding how earth node and air node and all of these uh, validation operations will work so that's uh, cool let's get uh, into it uh, so we now see the desktop. Um, so you can find the documents for World Mobile in uh, docs.worldmobile.io. Uh, and uh, there's lots of interesting uh, tidbits of information. So I want to go through that with uh, you guys. But before I do that, just a quick reminder. We are uh, testing with vending machine from made by Ada Seal. Uh, it's a, a pool. Um, that is uh, actually making a solution called vending machine for all of the pool operators that are single pool operators and we really love that and want to support that so we are testing out we are currently distributing to anyone with 100 ADA or uh, or more uh, delegated to our pool they will get a fixed amount of one worm of a token per epoch and also if you have 100 ADA or more you will also get 0 0.0002 from about tokens per ADA staked, so per epoch. So if you have uh, 100,000 ADA staked, you will get two more world mobile tokens per epoch. What's uh, also cool about the uh, vending machine is that uh, rewards will accumulate, so you can wait a bit before you withdraw, but be, be careful to withdraw before the expiry, because uh, vending machine functions with a pool, so every staking pool has its own, like, uh, what you, uh, a pool where you can store your tokens and if you don't claim your rewards in the expiry time in this case in 10 epochs then all your rewards will go back to the pool you will lose the rewards so how do you claim it's very simple you go to vmadaseal.eu and you type in your staking or your handle or your payment address and you check your rewards and uh, if you are delegating to uh, Adanor pool if and you have been delegating for at least one epoch already, then you should start to see World Mobile token rewards. And you'll be able to claim. We currently are testing this, and we might adjust, for example, the one World Mobile token per epoch, uh, in case it's abused in some way, but as we can see so far from the transaction cost, it, it does not pay off to just split into wallets, so... It doesn't seem like it will be abused, but uh, just keep in mind, here might be dragons, we are testing this, and things might change. But currently it looks like we will at least have uh, these rewards for another four epochs, it looks like, with the current pace. It could be quicker, could be slower, depends on how many delegates to us. Uh, but if it's a success, we might even extend it. So um, yeah, try it out, see if you like it, give us feedback. So that was the small commercial about our current reward let's go back into the documents so this is really a, a well written document as it's uh, very well defining what they are doing and uh, we are we, we always talk with war mobile about connecting the unconnected but how do you connect uh, and what lies in connecting is it just this internet connectivity no it's also this self-governed, decentralized identity. And how you, you connect people and you do this without the loss of privacy. So as you will see in these documents, there's quite a bit about digital, digital identifiers and how you can use this in a trustless manner and uh, uh, you yourself have control over your data. It's a big thing because most of these uh, legacy mobile operators, they 
use your data for whatever they they use it for a ton of stuff and you don't have the same type of control as you have with war mobile that's a better way forward it's a better mobile company really and um, having an identity you suddenly then have much easier to uh, provide uh, if your financial income and it's suddenly easier to do lending and suddenly easier to do all of these things that enables this sharing economy so connecting and unconnected has lots of implications it's not just about the internet access um, and it will be a bridge to the legacy world so for example you have this ether node so um, the network is in three layers with air nodes handling the local connectivity, let's say in a village, but then you have these uh, earth nodes uh, that, for example, NBX uh, will operate and I will also operate, uh, handles maybe some more heavier ca calculations like encryption of uh, voice uh, uh, messages and uh, so stuff like that. So this is the second layer and the third layer is actually the connection between the legacy world with the legacy mobile operators so having these uh, these uh, telco towers this uh, telco equipment to actually uh, send and call other telecom operators uh, and their uh, their uh, infrastructure so it's important to still have that bridge and war mobile does have that and it's built up in chapters, so the rollout will happen in seven phases. Stentor, Salvia, I would probably butcher some of these uh, pronunciations. Salva, maybe it's called. And then von Sommering, Morse, I can say Morse at least. Victoria Buchanan, Victoria Buchanan, um, someone please correct me on that one. Graham Bell, I definitely know Graham Bell, and Mensa. Those are the seven phases. And this layer approach is very much like uh, how Ada rolled out, Cardano rolled out uh, in its time. And I'm sure it will be much like in uh, Cardano, where you would be rolling out one phase, but you are already somehow started in the other phases as well. Um, these rollouts will not be strict from one to the next, but gradually. And um, they are. Uh, this is clearly a working document as they give some scope on it. Like uh, some are uh, set just as script, yes, scripts, and they are broadly set. Others are uh, at the planning phase. Some are at the scoping phase. This is marked on the top of the document. And some are in testnet. Some are in development. And yeah and some will be live in the mainnet. So this probably is meant as a living document, uh, I would suspect. So let's look at the Stentor phase. So Stentor is currently in testnet, so that means that uh, since mm, the rest of the community don't, don't have that, that means that it's con done currently with some controlled actors. And. Uh, what they are trying to do is deliver connectivity, identity, and financial infrastructures. So, this I find interesting is that like currently they are offering in connectivity free 30 minutes of customer guest access a day. And, uh, and they can modify this in the future, but that means that a lot of users now will have experience with War Mobile for free and they will then get a lot of valuable feedback on how it works and can roll out uh, based on all this feedback and it will spread positive uh, positive uh, experiences from the new customers and uh, that's definitely competitive and I'm sure it doesn't cost War Mobile that much either to do this so because they are based on a sharing economy and uh, that's that just shows how powerful this is and they're already, it's so interesting, already in this testnet, the first phase, we have already identity solution. Every subscriber will receive a self-sovereign identity through the use of decentralized identities, DIDs. And um, subscribers are, are responsible for handling their own identity. So not the ones who have guest access. And that's probably an incentive then to, to become a subscriber because you will have your own digital identity. 
and they, you are then allowed to authorize uh, and also regulators will have access local regulations and you process basically because of uh, legal requirements they will have access so uh, I can see value in that especially when you come from poor countries that you know how, how hard it is to have identity you have to have say for a bank account you will have to have two IDs but maybe you just have one or maybe you don't have an ID at all so it's a huge deal identity is really a huge deal uh, more so than many probably think in, in the, the first world but uh, in, in the in the more uh, undeveloped world parts identity is big and uh, every subscriber creates a wallet so it will be interesting to uh, look at wallet progressions going forward i just tested now one month and just looked at the Cardano chain how many wallets hold the uh, asset of Cardano uh, of uh, of uh, world mobile token it was already like a hundred and four percent increase in less than a month so it is growing <laughs> let me tell you that um also, having this uh, digital identities, it opens up a ton of stuff. Uh, I can just see the potential for social networks because you can create um, uh, interfaces so that you can have a contact book. Uh, you can uh, the subscriber controls over their discoverability parameters. So you can uh, discover, oh cool, you are now uh, trying out World Mobile, I'm also doing it. I can see, and you can set these settings, like who can see you. And you can connect with people in this way too. So connectivity from a social standpoint, not only from a internet standpoint as well. And I can definitely see how we can build on that and uh, build on top of these uh, social network solutions. Uh, <laughs> I think we are... <laughs> World Mobile is just at the really the start of a really excited, exciting journey. Um, they will have ways to recover your credentials, so that's interesting. How do they issue really these deeds? How can you potentially recover them? Where are these uh, digital identifiers stored? Uh, lots of questions when it comes to this. Um, It seems like they will do a custodity service, so maybe it will be uh, them who hold also this uh, issuing of the credentials. And uh, I understand, it's always like this hard debate about uh, not your keys, uh, then not your wallets, but really to onboard new users, I don't think for example exchanges or custody services are bad. It's uh, it's uh, an entry point into the crypto world, and when you are new, you do not have this knowledge. You do not have this knowledge to make it as secure as you need to be. So, I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's bad to start with a custodial service as long as you open for the user being able to migrate to other type of services. Then, I think it's fine. And. Uh, Maybe I will get some flack for that, but I don't think that hurts decentralization at all. I think it's quite the opposite. It uh, it increases decentralization. We onboard more users. In my own country, Norway, around 7% of the people have uh, cryptocurrency. So <laughs> we need to onboard more people before we can start about a system that's truly decentralized, that's truly for everyone. And how do you do that? You make the barriers of entry less for them. You make it easier for them to onboard. And how do you onboard fiat money? You do that through exchanges, you do that through custodial services. So it is not as bad as some make it be, but uh, it does not mean that I don't support uh, having your own wallets and having control. I totally support that. And I'm sure this, this will develop on World Mobile as well in the future. But for now, it seems like it will be a custodial service. Um, also in this hybrid phase the the way this is uh, settled is through a private ne network and it's centralized and uh, they are trying now to lay out a backhaul network and it's creating the first hub of connectivity with world mobile operated air nodes 
So these air nodes are now deployed in Sunstibar and uh, other strategic locations. And every air node, like every air node, this may be a local in the village, a, a small tower with a Wi-Fi, then it connects to a backhole point. And this backhole point usually has some form of internet access. Let's say it's fiber, let's say it's through one of the aerostats, let's say it's uh, through uh, other, like uh, even Starlink. But but currently these backhole points, they are operated by World Mobile. And uh, <laughs> they have, I have not uh, seen this before, but they have a breeder node. So in all of these backhole points, they will keep the temperature on how everything's going, the quality, network, how, what's the data flow. And uh, this is currently operated by World Mobile. And interesting enough, it will be transparent to air operators. So maybe the air node operators will see how is the network uh, currently working is it let's say in the case that it's congested all of the data capacity is taken maybe the air node operators would know this as well and for me that creates like a ownership to the business the, everyone in the shared economy have a right they have the transparency to see the data i think that's a great move by for mobile and uh, earth nodes uh, are a set of centralized and private instances of earth nodes and this will start in the first half half of 2022. So, air nodes, uh, earth nodes, we're coming soon. And for now, they will settle transaction on the Corona blockchain. Later, we will see this build out to other things as well. And the Aether nodes, uh, these are uh, the first one is in Tanzania and it's already established and it's operated privately by world mobile and it has three goals it, it's as i said these uh, ether nodes they are a bridge to the legacy telecommunication system and they are the ones storing encrypted personal data i guess this uh, ties to the dids for example and uh, to comply with local regulations to make sure the reg regulatory only has access to data transfer after a public audible due process so this is cool. It makes it a lot easier for Earth nodes. It's the Ether nodes who handles these uh, data logs. And if there's a request for who did what call, it's the Ether node people who have this information, not the Earth node people. And I think that's a great idea for War Mobile as well. So then the second phase, Salvia. No, Salva, I mean, oh my God. Please someone uh, tell me how to pronounce that. <laughs> um, it's interesting. Um, they, it's in development, and uh, the goals would still be run on a federated net network. But at the end of this chapter, it will begin the decentralization as Earth node operators gradually start to process transactions. So I guess this is when, in the middle of 2022 before uh, that time when the earth node operators are starting to become part of the network and earth air nodes will in this phase will be open to the public um, and all of the previously run in schools community centers government buildings and private location will be then part of this sharing economy so i guess that is the phase where the Air nodes also starts to become a business that started to become a part of the sharing economy ID. And we will have uh, native apps at this point. And uh, given all the amounts of partnership announced by World Mobile, I can see that there will be many native apps. And they are going to make a D app software development kit. So, all of you developers out, out there, that's interesting knowledge. And uh, they will make uh, evolutions on the architectural side. So they will make custom open uh, VRT packages. Uh, so I guess they will make it so that you just have this package of all the equipment you need to use and then their node operator is set to go to use it. And you will have a quality of service measurement at this point with air nodes and you will start to receive rewards. So this is when it becomes a business. This is when it becomes a sharing economy. 
for the earth nodes uh, it's still federated at this point and they are testing all the parameters of the world mobile chain and they will during salva they will be testing the consensus mechanism and they will have two types of uh, earth nodes and this current specification recommendations for them so for this like just a validation you would need uh, four cores 3.3 gigahertz and 16 gigabyte of ram 256 gigabyte ssd so that says something about uh, how fast the file system needs to be and 30 megabytes of bandwidth and running that's a quite a recent uh, linux version 515 and uh, for me this is always a card you on one side you want as many people as possible to be able to run these nodes but on the other side you want powerful enough specs so that uh, uh, it's very efficient and this i feel is a very good middle ground i believe also operators in africa could afford these type of specs and have this type of equipment available so yeah i think it's a good middle ground um, but then to run as a communication as a service a cause uh, you would later, because at this point we're still doing the federated network, but you would need this type of heavier specs. So 64 GB RAM, 2 TB SSD, I guess because you are storing then perhaps um, uh, storage as a service, very interesting. <laughs> I myself have been gearing up, I have a lot of storage capacity, so uh, yeah, it would be really cool to see and uh, encrypted chat as a service encrypted record calls of a, uh, as a service i mean all of this sets them up perfectly to do social networking and to do yeah digital identities in a much better way than what we have done before so it's very powerful and you need the uh, two terabit ssd 100 megabit bandwidth so even more because you are then running all of these services and the very recent version of linux so von Sommering, um, it's uh, really then uh, a fully decentralized chain at that point. There will be finalized the staking and rewards for Earth nodes. There will be on net real time communication, peer to peer voice and video calls. That's powerful, and also for social. So not only a social. Uh, platform but uh, for business for sharing information for uh, videos everything often net calls interconnection with legacy mobile network operators and basic marketplace with world mobile provider services so at this point in the third phase we already have a marketplace and probably the d apps with the developer kits for those will be in this marketplace and uh, the fourth phase, the Morse, uh, the planning, uh, the scope is set, and we work on a different architectural decisions and drawing up blueprints. So this is not yet the scope is set, but they are still drawing up the decisions and the blueprints for it. Um, so at that point, it's more about optimization, scalability, increased security replicability so it's easy so they scale basically this is a scaling goal and increase the number of communication as a service modules so <laughs> yeah they are definitely i my guess they're not just do, doing voice communication video communication they are going for every aspect of communication and social network is one aspect uh, like for example uh, other services like using digital identifiers as a communication device like to talk between let's say to a bank to, to talk to other um, other modules other services and I believe these digital identifiers opens up for a lot of communication services as well then we have the fifth phase uh, I will probably make another video to not make this video so long so we'll just shortly do the last three and at this phase, it's more about uh, inter-territory on net and off net calls. So basically, you know, World Mobile is trying to expand to several countries uh, due to this. And fiat to fiat international money transfer with transparent conversation con conversion rates. So yeah, this is super powerful. I made a 
one of my first presentations I did in 2000, but it was 2018 maybe, but uh, one of the first ideas I was working on was this uh, Family Connect, uh, a way for people to use with their own identities uh, and send money, or not even just send money, because then you wouldn't require a bank license, but you could actually just uh, ask for an approval for a family member to spend for you. And that way you avoid this whole bank licensing problem. But uh, what I saw at that time, for example, I was looking in Philippines and how much cut the international money transfers take. And it's huge. And there's a reason for for this uh, fiat to fiat money transfer. Uh, there's definitely, definitely a demand for it. And you can cut down costs easily using, for example, ADA as a transfer layer for these fiat to fiat transfers. And yeah, so what I said, the marketplace would be with DApps. It seems to be in phase five, this will happen. Uh, phase six, it's more about increasing number of DApps and services and maximize sort node and air node operator rewards. So that's also a good thing. And you can tell World Mobile is about giving back. It's about a sharing economy. Everyone has a piece of the cake. Everyone is part of this economy. It, 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 um, their success is our success, and our success is their success, basically. And uh, after that, they will have an epilogue with Mensa. And uh, he's, uh, I don't know Thomas Mensa, but he was born in Kumasi, Ghana, and recognized as the person that led the explosive growth of the internet. Oh, cool. By vastly improving and optimizing the manufacturing speed of fiber optics. Nice. I did not know that. And uh, yeah, that's a fitting name uh, for uh, becoming an African-born global mobile network operator built on blockchain that closes the global digital divide at an unprecedented rate. I love how ambitious they are. And you know what? I really think they can pull it off. World Mobile has, in my case, it's the most exciting project I have witnessed in my life. That's how much I believe in it. And the goals expand through sub Saharan Africa and other unconnected territories and franchise the world mobile sharing economy so that other mobile networks operators can license or model. So that's how you scale very fast, and so they can then basically do tons of uh, replicas of the world mobile model and connect it to this network and there will be a network effect as it will be cheaper and then suddenly we have international dialing rates as an unprecedented uh, value and we will have more connectivity between the legacy world and, the, and uh, the new world and the new economy so I think it's really powerful so that was my short video today about the documents I will be sure to look more into World Mobile just a quick reminder again, um, the pool at uh, the North Pole, if you delegate to it and have delegated for one epoch at least, with at least 100 ADA, you will currently get uh, one World Mobile token per epoch, uh, regardless of your amount, as long as you have 100 ADA, and 0 0.0002 World Mobile tokens for every ADA you are staked. So if you have 100,000 ADA, you would get three World Mobile Tokens per epoch. Alright, I hope you like this video. Thanks.